Welcome back to the third year of Perspective End. I just have to thank you all for getting me so close to my goal of 14k in that time that I'll count it. It's been a crazy ride, and I can't think of a better way to start off the new year of Perspective End than by roasting Transformers Prime, something I've been dreading doing. Not because I think the show is sacrosanct or anything, but because I'm worried that I can't do a good job since these designs are just so boring. What's that? They're basically the animated designs crossed with the movie ones with all of their worst aspects sanded off? So this is a pollination of like 4 out of 10s. Awesome! What am I supposed to say about this? Great! Look how almost as bad as the movies and animated this looks! Oh, biting wit for me, as per the usual. Anyways, your likes! Please give. And if you enjoyed this video by the end, and you aren't subscribed already, please consider it. Anyways, what better way to start a roast of Prime than with Prime? Oh, fantastic! The dude that makes Prime Soundwave and IDW Ultra Magnus look like the lives of the party. Dude, a fucking Roomba with googly eyes on it would be less of a robot than you! How do you take one of the most beloved characters in all of fiction and make them so dull I'm praying for them to die so there's no chance that they drag the show to a halt anymore by talking in endless platitudes? You are the reason that recent fans just don't like Optimus Prime anymore, dude. What's that? Primes are forged without a sense of humor? Tell that to Ballin, a booby trap that traps boobies, robo-dad of a generation, G1 Optimus Prime. I don't know if he'd laugh or be confused. I'll tell you that I'm sure confused looking at you. You got the pecs upward of a gorilla that then necks down into a twink's underwear. Nice booty shorts, bro. You about to twerk at a bachelorette party for singles? And then you got your upgraded form, Hostimus Prime, a man so fat that his feet were crushed into pancakes under his own weight. I don't think you got the memo on what an upgrade form is supposed to be like. I don't know about anyone else, but slower than ever with tons of shit to get hung up on yourself on, and basically no hands, is not what I'd call intimidating. All I can hear in my head when looking at this design is... I am Optimus Prime, and I would like three Big Macs, a half dozen Happy Meals, some onion rings, fried chicken. Ma'am, I do not care that you do not have fried chicken. Did you not hear me? I am Optimus Prime. You will give me my fried chicken. Also, Dino Nuggies. It is comical to watch this design try to pull off some sick kung fu moves. Though what am I complaining about? At least this design is stupid and funny, unlike how you're normally boredom incarnate. Chromia. No, wait, I meant RC. No, wait, I meant Chromia. Why is this frigid bitch the number one character in this franchise people want to bone? You literally look her up in Google, and even with safe search on, like the eighth image will be porn. I don't understand. This is a robot. She is clearly made of metal. Have people not seen Black Arachnia? I know they're both robots, but one of them is just a naked human. And that one is not RC. Speaking of, it's amazing just how much none of RC this evokes. Oh hey, the kindly confident pink hot rod? I'm thinking blue motorcycle with a chip on her shoulder big enough that you could drive Hostimus Prime through it, and a really uncomfortable relationship with a 16-year-old human boy she is literally millions of years older than. Also, gotta love how some people try to crow about how Prime doesn't have mass shifting, meanwhile Chromia here gains about 15 feet in height when transformed, and also somehow gains 75% of an extra wheel. Did the designers forget just how many wheels motorcycles have? And don't go telling me it's two wheels split in half. You can see 75% of a wheel on the backs of each of her calves, and then on her spine, you can see another 50. Unless for some psychotic reason, she split one wheel in half, quartered that, and attached it to the two other halves of the wheel in the furthest place on her body from where the first wheel was, then this is three wheels. And I would like an explanation for why any of that would be practical or necessary. And then there's Bulkhead. And I didn't know that you could ruin an animated design, but here we are. Bulkhead is a robot that was designed to be fat with stumpy legs from the beginning, and yet he never looked like he had half as much trouble getting around as you do, dude. Watching you run gives me anxiety as you waddle along trying not to trip over at the speed of the kid from Gundam SD. I don't know where to shoot you, dude, because your head draws attention to itself like it's a boss's critical hit zone, but at the same time, your torso is just such a juicy target, considering it's like 65% of your total mass. You don't look heroic, you don't look stylized, you look like you're having an allergic reaction to your shirt. And then what jackass in the writer's room was like, okay, so Bulkhead's thing is that he's an older dude who hangs out with pubescent girls. He did it in animated, he did it in prime. And when the cops came for him, he changed his name and he did it in the last night too. Then there's Ratchet. And man, I want to like you. But it's literally just because you're played by Jeffrey Combs, you Gundam at home looking ass. I definitely have to hand it to you. Your body looks less in the way of itself than most people in this shows. But I can't stop staring at your knockoff Gurren Lagan chest that's wearing Macho Man Randy Savage's sunglasses. Also, nice diaper, old man. The fact that it's a different color from the rest of you really draws the eyes to it nicely. Did you want people to look at that and not have to ask you for your senior's discount card? Also, the bulkhead, I needed that joke isn't funny. Fucking fight me. Breakdown. Oh god, insulting you guys is so hard. You're just a series of random geometric shapes. Why are your thighs cut like that? Why are your wrists cut like that? Why do you have this bit jutting off right here where it can't help but get in the way of everything that you want to do with your hand unless you're trying to punch something? Why are your thighs connected to your dick? Why did you put the flimsiest part of you just hanging off your elbow ready to snap off anytime that someone shoulder checks you in the hallway? Why do you have cloven feet? Why do you have tits to make Shockwave proud? Speaking of Shockwave, where did your tits go, bro? 
Did Knockout steal them so he could have something nice to snuggle up to when he's cuddling with Breakdown? You are the flattest a Shockwave has ever been. Also, the one who hit the gym the most and took the most steroids, which doesn't exactly fit the nothing but logic and science personality you have in the show. I don't need to explain myself to you. Being hot is simply logical. I do have to admit, though, that the boring personality makeover that everyone got in this series does work for once with you. At least you make sense as an uncharismatic bore. Speaking of, oh hey look everyone, it's the most overrated version of Soundwave, who decided to take the whole no personality thing to the next level by just judiciously deciding not to have one, via taking a vow of silence to prove that actions speak louder than words. That is the cringiest, stupidest bullshit I've ever heard. One, that's a human phrase. Why is a Cybertronian trying to live up to it? Two, who are you trying to prove this to, bro? Because I'm pretty sure that no one you know cares. Three, this needed to be proven? The whole point of the statement is that it is self-evident. What are you going to try and prove next by completely ruining the way you live, you pointy bastard? The ground is down, so you're gonna lay on your face until someone stomps on your head and kills you? I love how everyone treats you as this badass fighter who's super dangerous when the only evidence we are ever shown is that your arms are extremely long, so anyone trying to punch you has to get past your reach, and everyone just conveniently forgets that they have guns. Not that it would matter, because this show is second only to Netflix WFC in terms of plot guns. I'd mock you more for the way you look, but you're just a big triangle made out of triangles on chicken legs with gorilla arms and the world's saddest excuse for hands. No wonder you tentacle it up like you're out of the hentai. How else are you supposed to pick up anything? And then we got the most overrated version of Megatron ever. Oh, he's so scary. You only say that because his voice is raspy and his teeth are pointy. But I'm sorry, I can't be intimidated by incompetence. Under Starscream, the Decepticons had almost wiped out the Autobots and had the fuel to survive. And yet within one year of Megatron being put back in charge, with a full-fledged military, a flying fortress filled with super weapons, a vast resource network, and six total enemy combatants left to fight them, he loses the war! He snatched defeat out of the jaws of victory at every potential opportunity. You could honestly make the argument that he was secretly an Autobot plant the whole time. Only I can be the one to kill Optimus Prime. Man, remember when Abraham Lincoln was like, four score and seven years ago, only I can be the one to kill Jefferson Davis? Or when FDR was like, only I can kill Hitler? Or Theodore Roosevelt was like, bully, only I can kill the Kaiser? You know, honestly, I could see Teddy saying that, but he's a unique case. And unlike Megatron, Teddy would seal the deal and not just talk about it. Prime Megatron, on the other hand, is all words, no action, other than to punch himself in the face over and over again, bruising his brain more and more with each hit while claiming it makes him so hardcore and terrifying. But really, his design and personality are so lockstep with each other, it's unsettling. All show, no substance. The half-height, wrought-iron fence of villains in every conceivable way. The only way it's an actual deterrent is if you fall on its pointy bits because you fucked up. So how about we talk about your superior officer? Starscream, it must burn you up to see what Megatron did with your Decepticons. Because let's be frank here, for once, you were right. You were the best person to lead them, and unlike Megatron, you actually killed an Autobot who stayed dead, which is one more than we ever see Megatron do. But no, Prime is the dark and gritty Transformers show, where the Decepticons as a whole are more incompetent than they were in G1. Yes, it's so dark and gritty that the enemy faction literally kills themselves off most of the time and couldn't properly threaten a ham sandwich. The only character they kill off is the character they had to a quarter of the way through the first episode because a voice actor was probably charging them like $1 million per appearance to be there. The Decepticons sure are thrifty in this show. Hell, when Starscream made his clones this time, he couldn't even be bothered to paint them different colors like he did in Animated because the cons were so cheap. Or maybe it was just the animators. Would it make it easier or harder to walk around on four separate stiletto heels per foot? They just had to let everyone know that Starscream was the girliest of the boys with this design. And yet even with his sachet, he's still less of a twink than Optimus, who no, is not a twunk. Those don't just have Arnold Schwarzenegger's biceps and the body of David Bowie everywhere else. This is the weirdest roast video I've ever done. But what am I supposed to do with this? These designs are boring! I look at them and they're the saturated world filled with cold light even in the sun, and my eyes glaze over, and I see a screen of pure gray wherever I turn. Visuals more dull than the titular Prime's personality in this. Humorless and lifeless, I've no idea how to make an observation about the controlled chaos of these designs that is funny. These characters look like really refined junkyard sculptures, and I just don't know how to make that funny. So this was probably my first roast where it was more about the character's personality than it is their designs. Hope you all enjoyed, and I'm gonna go over here into the corner and have an existential crisis about this. And that's not half what I have to say, but it's enough what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.